Hey guys, welcome back to Rule the World. Last episode, we messed around with creating a post office, and now we've got our very own mailbox. So anybody who wants to send us mail, if it wants to be Duncan or Kim or anybody else on the server, actually I think that's the only people on the server, they can send us some mail and we can read it. But we also found out that Lord Blackwood himself is apparently called Tarquin. But more important than that, he's got a mailbox too. We sent him some rotten eggs and he sent us an invitation to go to his castle. We checked it out and there are troops everywhere. So I don't know what we're going to do. One thing we need to make sure is we're ready for war. So that's why this episode we're going to be making a soldier factory. It's time to stop messing around, stop thinking about farming and wood and food and quarries. It's time to think about the real deal, defending myself and getting some soldiers on the ground. So let's do it. Right, well, first thing I'm going to do is take off, take off this, this sign here, Tavern and Bard, because we took care of that. We've only got two more things on our kind of makeshift to-do list, and that is town walls and a castle let's build. Although I have to say that's not entirely true, because we were supposed to be finding the means to defend ourselves by making troops. So what we're going to do this episode is set up a troop factory. We've explored almost everything ancient warfare has to offer now, so what we can do is set up an automated crafting system using uh, this, uh, what is this? This auto crafting station to make ourselves just basically a system that automatically builds an army for us. So we can log in every day and just check out our new army. Also, I built an, a fancy oak sign from Bibliocraft. And we're going to give it a name, but obviously to give it a name, I need some special Bibliocraft tools. Or do I? No, I just have to shift and right click. There we go. Right now, we're gonna make um, a sign for the post office. And I think the best way to make a post office sign is by using paper. So we'll get some paper here. Now there's still fish going into uh, going into this warehouse. So something's going wrong. I think the problem is this, yeah, this block here is a bit clogged. We've got cooked fish here. Yeah, that's right. This warehouse is a bit clogged. We've got 23,000 pieces of food in here now. And we're slowly adding cooked steaks and pork chops and things because I've set up this these ovens now to automatically accept and receive fish and chicken and beef. So Martin, oh, he should have taken that fish. Yep, he's taken it. Martin and Benji are going around collecting food and putting it into the oven. Now we've got a bit of a clog here because what's supposed to happen is Trot is supposed to work on this warehouse and this warehouse, but this version of Ancient Warfare keeps crashing when you try and use work orders, which means we can't tell him to spend half of his time on this warehouse instead. So the problem is this gets all clogged up. So what we might have to do is uh, is get another NPC set just to work on this specific um, specific warehouse. It's a bit of a shame actually that we have to do that because we really shouldn't. But you know, the mod is a bit bugged at the moment so we need to wait for the update to come through. Right, so we'll put some paper there. Make it really big. There we go, it looks a bit weird, but now everybody knows that this is the post office at Stinterfell. All right, sweet, now let's just, oh, this rain, oh man, it shuts down my NPCs and it shuts down my mood, that's for sure. So we need to get rid of this rain. Oh, rain, rain, go away, never come ever again. In fact, why don't we ban rain from Minecraft? What good does rain possibly do apart from put out fires? I don't know, right, let's have a sleep and skip the rain. Oh, okay, a glorious night, and we've skipped the rain. It stopped. There we go. Right, so we've mostly fixed Benji and Martin, but the problem is using NPCs in Ancient Warfare is so much more complicated than just using pipes from other mods. It's a lot cooler in some ways. It's quite fun to get medieval and physical and have these NPCs running around, but it would be much easier just to have a pipe that sucks out items from the warehouse or sucks out all of the fish and the beef and the pork chops and puts them directly into the ovens and then sucks them out of there. But I do like what we've got going with the with the, uh, with the the NPCs. It adds a bit of personality and flavor to the kingdom of Stinterfell. Right, so a soldier factory. What do we need for a soldier factory, right? Well, what we're gonna need is an auto crafting table. So I'll get making one of those. A courier, I've already made a courier as well. And uh, and I've given him, uh, where, where is it? There we go, a large pack as well. So we're all good to go for setting up a courier to deliver all of the materials that the soldier factory will need. Oh right, yeah, we moved our crafting stuff as well. So it's down by the warehouse now, which is a lot, a lot better, I think. A lot, a lot easier to get to. So we need to make an auto crafting station. 
Right, so there it is. Two wooden gears, iron, crafting table, a bench. That's all super easy to make. But I think I might have to use normal oak wood. So let's just get some oak out of here. Oh, whoa. Oh, my God. Look at this. So we finally upgraded our warehouse all the way. It's as big as it can possibly get. And it's almost full to the brim. There's only space for another two stacks worth of stuff. So let's look at some of the stuff that we should be able to get rid of. Now, there's food that's going in here that doesn't really need to be there. We can put that into the other crafting station. But the big problem, I think, is dirt and cobblestone from the quarry. As the quarry digs, we're filling this thing up with loads and loads of dirt. We've got 8,000 dirt. That's crazy. We've got 1,300 feathers, 1,200 leather. Some of these things, we're just going to never need this amount of stuff. Like 400 saplings. That's just crazy. 571 sand. Wow, that must be from the quarry as well. 1,500 seeds. I mean, we should be using seeds for something, actually. I mean, we could probably be turning them into biofuel or something. Right. So what we're going to do is make an auto-crafting table. Oh, wow, we've got 65 iron in here. No iron bars, but that's okay, because we can go and put this iron into the into the blacksmith's forge, our Tinker's Construct Forge. Right, so some more lava to stoke the smeltery. There we go. Oh, now we're running out of this lava, actually. We should get some pumped up here. There we go. And now there we go. The, there we go. The iron's almost smelted. Whoa, now there's not going to be enough room to smelt all of this. There we go. This should be like 130. There it is. Wow, 113. Close. Right, so let's put the remaining iron ore in there. Get out these iron blocks. Now we're going to need a lot of iron to make all of the swords that we're going to need for our soldiers. It's roughly two pieces, two pieces, two iron ingots per sword. And I think you need an iron sword to make it a soldier, or it might be, um, it might be a wooden sword. Let me check. So here we go, a combat NPC. Oh no, we just need a wooden sword. Now we're going to give each of these soldiers an iron sword so that they're not completely useless. But the real bottleneck, I think, is going to be getting enough gold to get the, the army of the size that we want. All right, there we go. And how many iron ingots now remain in the smeltery? 27. Now, nine ingots per base and three nines are 27. Oh, wow. Exactly enough to make three more blocks of iron. All right, so we're good to go as far as troops go. Now, I know that we were going to try and make like a super hardcore amazing army, get them amazing armor, amazing weaponry, and just have an elite fighting force to fight for us. But the truth is, right, if you look at our champions, they're all pretty cool. They've all got amazing armor, but they're not actually that great when it comes to combat. With ancient warfare armies, it's all about strength in numbers. And as soon as these guys die, they drop all of their stuff on the floor. So to put that into perspective, that's a diamond axe, a diamond command baton, uh, a diamond, I think um, the Green Knight has a special sword. Actually, I haven't seen the Green Knight for a while. I wonder where he's got to. And uh, and all of, not to mention all of this elite kind of nether ore armor as well, like the purple, the orange, and uh, I think the green armor from, from Theron. And he's got orange as well. Yeah, but that armor is super hard to get. And every time they die, they just leave it on the floor. We can resurrect these guys and bring them back to life but we lose all of their stuff. And that's something I'm not prepared to do. It's just too expensive to keep doing that and bringing them back and having to go around and see if you can find the stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on temporary kind of rubbishy troops that are really bad, but it doesn't matter because we can just throw them at our enemy and they're expendable as anything and they'll all die probably, but it doesn't matter because we'll kill our enemy. And that's at the end of the day, what's most important, right? Is defeating your enemy at any cost. Right, so one of the ways that we can help the warehouse and get that all uncongested. What's wrong, Martin? Are you are uh, you hungry? Well, you've got an upkeep order, so you know where the uh, you know where the food is. Why won't you go and get something to eat? Do you need a punch? Just a friendly punch? There we go. That's all he needed to get going. Ah, oh, sometimes Martin comes into the office and he's got like a sad face on. He's like, I oh, oh, don't know what to do, Stan. And I'm like, Come on, Martin. And I just slap him in the face. And it's exactly what he needs to get going uh, in the day. It's better than better than uh, egg and uh, egg and bacon for breakfast, I think. Slap in the face. Right. So that's all the iron that we need for the auto crafting station. Let's get let's get let's get to the station and uh, let's get to the engineering station and make one. 
So it's two wooden gears, a chest. Right, so I can make the chest and I can just use Sakura planks because they're not much use for anything else. I can make a crafting bench also out of Sakura planks. Man, this stuff is so versatile. There we go. Actually, this is a different type of crafting table, so it might not work. I'm going to need some actual oak, I think. O is for oak, and this thing's alphabetical. Or is it just wood? What is what is what is what are wooden logs called? There they are, oak wood. Right, crafting table, check. Chest, check. What else? Just the wooden gears and the planks, right. Wow, I have 17 blocks of iron. That is 17 times 9. That's whoa, that's like over 150 blocks of ingots of iron. That's crazy. So an ingot at the bottom, and then I think planks for the rest of it. There we go, the auto crafting station. Now this is what we're gonna put the recipe for making a combat NPC into. Again, we're gonna be really bottlenecked as far as, well, making the wooden swords, because wooden swords don't stack, but also making the gold ingots. We've got plenty of food bundles though. Actually, now I'm thinking about it, it really just doesn't make any sense to make a factory just yet until we have enough gold to make it completely completely viable. Right, so let's work on turning all of the gold that we've got into as many soldiers as we can. Now we've got 54 blocks of gold. That means we've got enough gold for 26 soldiers. Now let's go and get the food bundles. I think they should be in the engineering station. There they are. Now we just need wood for swords now. There we go, 30, 30 sticks for 30 swords. And now we need two planks per sword. So that's going to be all about a stack of wood. Oh, well, whoops, that's a bit too much. But we can just put the remainder in here. Man, if only wooden swords stack, it would solve so many of my problems. Whoa, oh my god, look at all these swords. Okay, so this is going to be, what, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Right, this is enough for 15 soldiers right here. So let's just get started. Oh, there's even some gold ingots already in there. We can actually make 32 soldiers. Wow. Okay, so let's just try this. Blam, combat NPC. Blam, combat NPC. Blam, combat NPC. Blam, combat NPC. Okay, and 10 years later, we're gonna have the makings of our own army. Oh yeah, there we go, that's much quicker, and blam. Oh my God, 29, 30 combat troops. All right, soldiers, mount up. Now let's see what happens when we put down our first soldier. We've already done we've already done this before in the in the uh, in the case of the Green Knight. But now every single one of these combat NPCs, oh, he's off, he's off, he's already already he's hungry for food. Now every single one of these dudes is going to have this plain old combat NPC skin, and that's a bit of a shame actually because I like I like my dudes to look kind of unique. So let's see what we can do when we right click. Now it's just called the combat, N combat NPC, but we're going to call him Grunt because these guys are basically the grunts. Right now, for a skin, we need we need a, a suitable skin for a grunt. And who can I think in the office that does nothing but grunt and moan and complain and is just perfect cannon fodder? Oh, I know who. We can make it Ross. Oh yeah, give him a sword and he's going to be good to go. Let's pack this guy up. There we go, and give him an iron sword. Right, so we're gonna need a training ground to try out our new troop, Grunt. Gonna give him an iron sword. There we go. Now, oh right, that's the courier I made earlier. I haven't given him a task to do yet though, so he's just wandering around, kind of just lost and looking for food. All right, Grunt. Are you ready to learn how to fight? Yo, oh, eat shit, eat shit. Oh, oh, oh no, oh, oh, sarcastic comment. Oh, oh, insulting, derogatory. Oh, oh. All right, all right, Grunt, none of that from you. You're in my army now, which means no messing around. And you have to shave off that, that, that mess of hair that you call you call a beard and hairstyle because, oh my God, that is horrible. <laughs> right, okay, so I'm gonna fast forward to outfitting all of my uh, other 29 combat NPCs with iron long swords, a Grunt name, and, uh, and a suitable skin. So, see you in a bit. Right, so my 30 Ross grunts are waiting in the warehouse. So we'll need some food for the town hall to feed Ross and- Oh yeah, luckily enough, the cooked fish- Wow, we've got like, 
Look how many cooked fish we have. So definitely it's working. The technique of making Martin and Benji cook, uh, put the cook, put the fish in here. Yeah, oh, it's definitely working. And there's some steak in there too. Fantastic. There's nothing better, nothing more rewarding than when uh, when a plan comes together and when NPCs do what they're supposed to. Right, so here we go. We're going to put down a nice little kind of garrison for our Rosses. And I think what we're going to do is probably put them down over here. I'm going to get, uh, oh, whoops, going to get some of this grass out of the way, like this. And we're going to have a garrison of Rosses right here next to the post office. Now, we're going to need 30 spaces to put down Rosses. So let's see. If I mark out the area with these dark oak wood logs. One, two, three. Oh, get rid of that herb garden. And now we just need to count 10 along. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we can put the next logs here. And this looks pretty small at the moment, but don't worry, it's gonna be quite big. This is our first garrison of Rosses. And what we can do is we can stagger these around town, just have garrisons of Rosses, garrisons of Grunts, and then whenever whenever we need them to come to action, we can fill the town hall behind them with food and uh, and let, let them rip and let them go and, and, uh, and take on the enemy. And the finishing touch is going to be a town hall at the back here, and we're gonna we're gonna carve it into the wall. Uh, Got to be careful, actually, because if we put it too close, other NPCs are gonna come and try and use this town hall, and they're gonna get really confused when there is uh, when there is no food there. So I tell you what we should do. Actually, we should just leave the town hall here for now, and then only put it down when we actually need to, because we don't actually need to feed Ross until we actually need to use him. So let's just put down some fences and finish off the build. All right, so it's complete. Oh my God, this is terrifying. But oh my God, these guys are so crammed in. This guy's, he's almost being pushed through the fence. Oh my God. Right, and so what we can do is, as soon as enemies come, as soon as Blackwood's forces are trickling through the, through the, through the paths and coming down to raid me, I can grab out a command baton Attach all of these grunts to a command baton, break the fences, and set them free. Or alternatively, I can just repack all of them up and just plonk them down right in front of Blackwood's castle, and he won't be able to stand against the might of these grunts. But I don't want to use the grunts yet. I want to make sure that war is the last option, because just like in real life, if you can do something diplomatically, do that. And then if you can do it by stealing and assassinating, do that. But if you can't do it by either of those, well, then it's time to actually go to war. All right, guys, well, I've been Shin, and this has been Rule the World. We've got like a million Ross grunts. We've been to the Twilight Forest. We've got some cool ore from there, and we've had a good time. Next episode, what I might do is see if I can plan the perfect heist to get inside Blackwood's castle and, uh, and assassinate him. Whoops, just dropped my blade. There we go, got it back. All right, until next time, guys, hit like, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you for some more Rule the World. Take care.